How do you cook a turkey so that it's flavorful, juicy, and cooks in a fraction of the time as using a traditional method? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. When most people cook turkey, they usually just take it out of the package, take the giblets out. Sometimes they stuff it, sometimes they don't. But otherwise they don't change it or alter it or cut it in any way before they put it in the oven. And this is a really bad thing because it results in a lot of uneven cooking of the turkey. Because a turkey is, is very bad at having even heat flow. It's basically a giant globe of meat. So, as you can see on the turkey, it has a large cavity on the inside that heat doesn't really penetrate into. And that's why when you're usually getting to the point where the breast meat is getting to the right temperature of around 165 degrees Fahrenheit, your thigh meat and your leg meat might only be around 130 or something. So you have to cook it for longer and you end up overcooking the breast in order to cook the turkey evenly. So with this method, it's called spatchcocking the turkey or butterflying the turkey. And what it, what it is basically is you remove the backbone of the turkey and you lay it flat on the baking tray and that allows the heat to cook the turkey more evenly and it results in a more tender and crispier turkey because there's more turkey skin that's exposed to the heat and it's a flatter profile so the heat can more evenly cook it at a normal temperature. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the turkey over so that we have the backbone exposed and we're going to take some kitchen shears and we're going to start from the bottom and we're going to start cutting as close to one side of the backbone as possible. And depending on how sharp your kitchen shears are, it might take a bit of work. Okay, so that's one side of the backbone done. Now we're gonna do the other side. All right, there we go. So we've now removed the backbone and we're gonna use this for the turkey stock for the gravy. So I'm just gonna put that in with the rest of the giblets and we'll boil that up as part of the gravy. So now we have this turkey without a backbone and what we want to do is flip it around like this and we're going to press as hard as we can on the breast of the turkey just like you're giving someone CPR but a lot harder and the point is to break the breast bone so that it lays flat. Okay, there we go. Now you can see it's a lot thinner profile now. It's very flat, there's no more cavities, there's a lot more skin that's exposed to the surface which is going to allow the heat to crisp it up a lot more. So all we're going to do now is we're going to tuck the wings in behind the breasts like this. Just to make sure everything is tight. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on the turkey. I'm going to let it rest for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to put it on the oven rack. And we're going to do a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. And we're just going to let this sit for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes now and the turkey's had a chance to dry brine a little bit and the salt has had a chance to penetrate into the meat. So now we're going to transfer it to the cooking tray. To make the cooking pan, all I did is I took a standard aluminum foil baking pan that you usually cook turkey in and I put a grill or a grate over it. This is actually a grate from my master-built electric smoker. So if you have one of those, it fits perfectly into these standard cooking uh, pans. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer the turkey onto this. And the, the point of the rack is just to allow the heat to get underneath it as well as over top of it and to make the skin crispier. So I'm gonna transfer the turkey onto this rack now. All right. There we go. And I'm just gonna, again, make sure that everything is tight. So the wings are tucked behind the breast and the legs are bound up by this piece of skin that's left over. Everything's nice and tight and that's it. So this thing is ready to go into the oven now. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit while you're doing this 
and we're gonna cook it for about an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. This is a 14 pound turkey. If you're doing a 12 pound turkey at 450 degrees, you probably only need about an hour and 20 minutes, which is still significantly faster than any other way you're gonna cook a turkey. And it's gonna turn out great. So the turkey is going into the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're putting it on a lower rack because this is raised up a little bit. So I want it to be in the center of the oven for better airflow. So that goes in, close that up, and we'll take a look at it in another hour and 30 minutes. All right, this turkey has been cooking for about an hour and 30 minutes and I put a temperature probe in it. It's about 165 degrees Fahrenheit right now in the breast and uh, I checked the thigh and it's the same. So that is the perfect temperature to take it out. So we're gonna take it out of the oven now. So I took this turkey out of the oven when it was about 165 degrees Fahrenheit in the breast and in the thigh. So that's how I know it is safe and it is cooked. It took about a, an hour and 30 minutes total, which is extremely fast for a turkey. And then I let it rest for about 30 minutes tented with some aluminum foil. So I'm gonna take the foil off now and here's the bird. So it looks really good. I'm gonna cut into it and see how juicy and tender it is. The skin is just crackling as I cut into it. This is the crispiest turkey skin I've ever seen. This is awesome. So we'll cut this leg away. Oh man, it just like falls off. It falls off because there's no backbone to keep the leg on anymore. So it's just super easy to carve now. I'm gonna cut around the breast. Oh. Oh my God, this is good. Woo, got a little squirt of juice on me. All right, look at that. Wow, jeez, that's amazing. This turkey is so tender and juicy. I've never seen a turkey this tender and juicy. Having cooked it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and a half, as opposed to cooking it for at like 325 degrees Fahrenheit for five hours, basically all day on Thanksgiving day. This is a huge change. So this looks great. I'm gonna carve this up and take a bite. Look at that. Mmm. Oh man, that's good. That's really good. I highly suggest cooking your turkey this way. If you still want to make stuffing, then just cook it in a separate baking tray because it's not worth it to cook the whole turkey with stuffing inside it. Everything's just going to cook unevenly. So unless you're looking for like a really nice presentation where you need to have the turkey on display on your Thanksgiving table, I don't think many people do that anymore, then really you're just carving the turkey up before you serve it anyway. So this spatchcocking method or butterflying the turkey is a really good way to do it. You can save a lot of time and you can spend more time with your family on Thanksgiving instead of cooking your turkey for five hours. So this is really amazing. I'm gonna dig into this now, but thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. See you on the trail.